Hi, so in this video I'm going to be discussing ways in which the PPF or production possibility frontier may be shifted and this should be quite simple where we're gonna tend to just think of if we're having economic growth this can shift the PPF outwards as I've shown on this graph or this chart or this PPF diagram and then I will quickly go over where we may not necessarily have the PPF shifting outwards but it could also shift inwards if we have the opposite of economic growth and economic contraption and we may also have different kinds of shifts but okay let's start with just where we begin with a simple PPF diagram and so we have a y-axis so on the y-axis we have good y this could be any sort of good in the past I've used pizza for this good y and on the x-axis we have good x and this could be ice cream as, as I used in a previous video but what we then have is if I go over this in green we have this PPF curve which says the this curve is all the possible combinations along this curve that we can produce of these goods and these are the maximum number of goods or the maximum bundle that we can produce. We, we know we can produce inside here as well but this would be inefficient as I mentioned in a previous video. And now what we're going to consider is that we have an increase in the level of resources in our economy. So we've said our economy as it is can at most produce on this frontier, this PPF, this green curve which I've added crosses just to show that this is infinitely many different bundles that lie on this curve. And so at the moment we can produce at most this amount of the goods, but consider that we have an increase in our level of resources. Let's say we increase our labor force, so we have more workers that are able to produce more, or we have an increase in natural resources. So for example, we find some oil somewhere or we find a deposit of metals, which allow us to create more factories or anything like that or we have an increase in our technological understanding which is something that we definitely do observe uh, very often in reality that we make some sort of technological breakthrough maybe we find some technology that makes our machines run more quickly so we can produce much more of good y or good x and what this is going to do is this is going to shift our ppf outwards to this new curve which I will roughly go over in red and what is this showing us well we can now produce all these bundles on this new PPF curve which I'll just put some X's on there and it says that before if we were maybe producing uh, this red X on the original green curve well we've had an increase in our labor force or we've had an increase in natural resources or an increase in technology so now when we could only produce say this many of x and this many of y we can now produce more of both we can produce x1 and y1 so we can increase production of both of these because we have more resources or we have an improvement in technology so we can use our resources more efficiently so hopefully this is quite straightforward that if we have an increase in economic growth and here we are describing by economic growth some increase in our inputs to production and so this means that we can have an output input an increase in output which is what we think of as economic growth we have higher output in our economy and so a shift in the ppf shows us an increase in economic growth so what is the opposite of this well if we have the opposite of economic growth we have an economic decline well, we could actually have an inward shift in the PPF, and I won't go over this in as much detail, because hopefully that made a bit of sense in the previous diagram. But let's consider that we have goods S and good T, uh, just two different goods, just keeping some random algebraic notation. Well, let's consider that we have an earthquake or a tsunami or a natural disaster that wipes out our capital stock. So we have a reduction in capital. Maybe our earthquake just takes out a load of factories perhaps a better example would be a war and if we're thinking at the end of world war ii where we had lots of bombs 
that went off and targeted factories in, say, the UK and Germany and all the countries involved in the war, we have a reduction in the capital stock, which means that we can produce much fewer goods. We maybe originally could have produced T goods of T and S goods of S, but we blew up half of the factories and we, we lost lots of the labor force because they died in the war. So now we can only produce this much of each of the good, T1 and S1. And so an inward shift in the PPF, if we're shifting from, say, PPF1, which is here, to PPF2, this is going to be an inward shift and it's going to show us an economic decline or some sort of negative economic growth. And so we can show that with an inward shift of our PPF curve. And for the final example, we can look at this PPF curve. So we have goods M and good N, again, just two random goods. And we originally have this PPF curve, which is showing us the maximum number of goods that we can produce with our current resources. And now let's consider that we have an improvement in technology or an increase in technology uh, to some extent. And this improvement in technology is going to only be for good N. So we make some sort of breakthrough in technology. Let's say we have good M and this is haircuts. And so this is the number of haircuts we can have in our economy. And good N is going to be something completely different. So this is going to be, say, uh, laptops that we produce in our economy. And the reason we're having two completely different goods here, and in fact, they're not both goods, this is a service, this haircuts, consider that we have an improvement in technology in factories and machinery, and so we can produce much more quickly, which means that we could, we could increase our production of laptops very much, so this is what this increase in technology for good end, but an improvement in machinery isn't really going to increase the number of haircuts we can offer. Uh, if we think very basically that haircuts have nothing to do with the technology for laptops, we can see that the technology for laptops could improve while leaving haircuts completely unchanged. How does this impact our PPF? Well, let's say originally we could have produced at most this many laptops, and I'll just call this N1. This is how many laptops we could have produced. But now we've improved the technology for laptops considerably, and so now we can at most produce N2 laptops. And what we can see is that if we now draw our PPF with this red curve, it shows that for any given level of haircuts that we could have produced before, we, we could now produce more laptops because our technology for laptops has improved, but it's had no impact on our haircuts being offered. So for any given level of haircuts, we can now produce more laptops. So we have this sort of asymmetrical shift in our PPF curve because we haven't changed the number of haircuts we can offer, but we are able to produce laptops maybe more cheaply uh, for fewer resources so we can produce more of them. And so there are lots of different ways that we could see our PPF curve shifting. We don't necessarily just need to see a parallel shift outwards, which we showed first, which would look something like this. We, we could have lots of relationships where, say, the technology for laptops improves, but for some reason we can offer fewer haircuts. Let's say that our population declines at the same time as our technology for producing laptops improves. So we could have our PPF curve shifting in a number of ways and it doesn't have to just be a parallel shift. So that's something worth thinking about. And it may look good in an exam if we think about these sort of things that we're not just arbitrarily shifting our PPF curve outwards. We could have lots of different relationships and we really need to understand what the PPF curve is showing. It's showing the maximum com 
combination or maximum bundles of each good we can produce. And then once we understand that, we can see that the PPF curve can shift in any number of ways. So that will wrap up this video. Please make sure to drop a like if it was at all useful. Subscribe for future videos and check out the playlist for lots of videos on a similar topic to this one.